What's up, guys? Welcome into the Neutral Zone. Uh, my name is Terrence Checkett. I'm your host. I'm with three guests um, from three different regions, uh, three different years in school. Um, so, yeah, we're going to help uh, break down a little bit of a Nationals preview for you guys. Um, I'm going to start off with some introductions. Um, we got names, year in school, how many years you played dodgeball, and uh, a hobby outside of dodgeball. So, uh, Trent, you want to start us off? Yeah, I'm Trent. Uh, I'm from JMU. I'm a senior. I've been playing for three years, and uh, I like to snowboard outside of dodgeball. Right on. Uh, Nick? Uh, I'm Nick from MSU. I'm a senior. Uh, only my second year playing dodgeball, and outside of dodgeball, I like to start in mountain biking. Paulson? I'm Colson. I'm from OSU. I'm a freshman, first year playing dodgeball. I like to play basketball and golf whenever I can. Nice. All right. So um, we'll first start off with some questions geared towards uh, each of your respective teams, um, just kind of where we're at heading into the big weekend. Um, Trent, we'll start off with you. Where? What's JMU's mindset headed into nationals? Yeah, um, like I said, we're gonna. We think we're gonna dominate. Uh, we just came off hot off our first East Coast Dodgeball Cup win, champions. Uh, we want to keep that going. Bring on the second trophy. We're not just gonna stop at one. So yeah, we think we're going in pretty confident. Okay. Uh, how are the Spartans feeling, Nick? Um, I don't think anyone's surprised that we're coming in to repeat. Uh, coming off our third MDC in the last three years, and then having a Pretty solid outing a couple weekends ago at GV, kind of taking care of business with them in Cincy, um, trying to ride that wave in and keep it going, uh, do it again this year. Yeah. Colson, what about OSU? Oh, we're feeling great. You know, had a little bit of a break since war, but we are there. We did really well. We're really excited to get back to playing and hopefully kick some butt. Right on. All right. So specifically, Trent, what about JMU makes you guys uh, the team that can play seven games this weekend and uh, win on Sunday? Oh, uh, I well, I definitely think we're like the deepest team when it comes to talent. Like a lot of the teams have like a top like four, like top six guys that like really carry. And I feel like with like me and Joel, like being the throwers, we kind of get a lot of attention. But are like six through twelve. They're they're really good. Like they would start on any other team. Like they might be in overtime six for some of these other teams. So, I think we have probably the strongest overall well out of anybody else in the league. Word. All right, Nick. What about uh? What about the Spartans roster? Makes you guys primed for a big run on Sunday. I would argue with um Schaefer about having the deepest starting 12 um I think we're pretty young obviously losing the four seniors from last year um kind of main guys but means like me and Ty are our only two seniors and then we're built off a lot of freshmen and sophomores who have gained experience throughout the year have kind of proven themselves as being top guys and contributors throughout the year so I think their gained experience, especially with MDC in the last weekend at GV, um, I think all that experience will help bring it. And obviously, the vets from last year who had experience winning it, we kind of know what it takes and can help lead them. Cool, Colson. I know you haven't been there for too long, but um, yeah, what do you what do you think about OSU? What's what's the roster makeup like? What what uh, positions you guys well to make a run? I think, you know, we're also a pretty deep team, especially it's going to help because national seems like it's a lot more like a marathon than a race at times. And, you know, whenever you need your bigger arms to take rests, I feel like we definitely got those guys that can take those reps in some games to give us, to give others, you know, time to heal their arms, rest their shoulders as much as they can to give them time to really perform in bigger in some of the bigger games. For sure. Yeah, the hosting advantage is definitely another thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm um, excited for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, all right, moving on. 
I'm going to ask each of you to shout out one underrated player on each of your teams that might not get the recognition that um, other guys on your team do. Trent? Yeah, see, I have two, but, like, I want to say Nick Foss, but I feel like at this point everyone knows who Nick Foss is. Like, everyone knows Nick Foss. Yeah, like, aside from Angleman, arguably, I think Nick's probably one of the best catchers in the league. Uh, if we're going to go with underrated, I got to say Jared Householder. He's a senior, but he's, like, he is one of our main throwers. It, as soon as me or Joel go down, like, he steps in and he dominates just as well as either of us do when it comes to throwing. So I would definitely say watch out. I mean, he had the most kills at our East Coast Cup, if you saw our post on that. I saw that on your guys' Instagram. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's an animal, dude. He does not get the attention that he should. I was going to say, I recognized him all the way from my freshman year. He's been around for a while now. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, Nick, who's a name on MSU that the rest of the league might not know as well? I feel like he's starting to get more recognition. But I'd say Thomas Swanson. The taller guy who plays middle for us, he's a sophomore. This is his second year, too. Um, in the middle of the year, I started out at the beginning of the year playing middle, and he was playing right side kind of halfway throughout the year. Me, him, and Kevin talked, and we switched it up, moved me back to right because that's where I played last year and moved him to the middle, and he's done a hell of a job holding down the middle. Um, really smart, can draw a lot of throws with his pump fake in action, and then makes a lot of strong throws and – a lot of strong counters out of the middle. So I feel like me and Bearball kind of get some of the attention being on the two outsides, but Thomas has done a really good job in the middle and is a force to reckon with for sure. Yep. Colson, OSU underrated player. I say, I mean, I think most people definitely know Elijah, but I don't think he gets everything that he deserves because he's arguably like, the best facilitator you could ask for, and he is the one of the top catchers in the league as well. And he makes those big plays whenever we need one. If we're down some guys, if anyone's making a play, it's that guy. And, and I mean, never fails to this. Like, he's, he's always there. He's always yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like the league is sort of catching on to, no pun intended, his catching ability, but his leadership skills are something that a yeah. lot of people don't really know about. He's a huge on-the-court communicator, I've noticed for you guys. Yeah, every game before the game starts, he's always going down the line, high-fiving every single person since the first game. He's done that, and something that, I mean, definitely helps as little as it is. Yeah. All right, Um, starting with you, Trent, this year or just overall in your dodgeball career, who has been your favorite opponent or if there's a single person specifically who you like playing against? No, nah, we, we don't like playing against anyone. <laughs> I I don't think we have a favorite. I don't think I have a favorite. I mean, I like playing against Cincy because like it's fun to like go back and forth with like West West and stuff, and we always had like a good rivalry there. But I mean, we don't really think we're like friends with other teams. I mean, I think we've always kind of been like the villain, you know. So yeah, I guess I should rephrase. Who's your favorite opponent to beat? <laughs> okay yeah give me cincinnati or grand valley because we've always just had like a respect for grand valley i feel like ever since i was a freshman like they've always been like the most dominant team so it always feels good to beat them just like knowing their track record for sure uh nick do you have a favorite i mean i feel like there's an obvious answer for you but um yeah favorite team to play against or maybe more specifically a player that you like to go head to head with I mean, I feel like I'm going to go a little different than what you're thinking, and I was actually going to give it to JMU. Because, um, okay. I mean, like they said, they're kind of the villains, and I feel like we kind of have that same mindset. Like, a lot of people don't really like us around the league. And, you know, when we play JMU, like, we have respect for them. Um, they're a good team. And, like, when shit happens in there, it's best player on best player, like, nothing soft about it like we're not going to back down they're not going to back down and that's what makes it great like crap talk and smack talk like that's what makes it fun and we know that we can give it to them and they know that they can give it back to us so i i wish we got to play jmu more um because they're, they're just fun games and yeah so I'll, I'll actually give it to jmu on that one just dog on dog at that point yeah like i want to agree i love love playing michigan state but they've you guys have knocked me out of the semifinals the last two years, so I don't necessarily 
enjoy playing you guys, but I have a lot of respect for like Kevin and Becca and stuff. So you guys definitely play with like a lot of strategy and it's it's always fun. Yeah. All right. Uh finishing up this uh team section, what's one thing serious or unserious that the rest of the league does not know about your team that they should? Uh we'll start with uh Colson on this one. Um I think something that I mean, people don't know because it's just kind of our thing. But, like, we always have alumni coming back to practice with us, which I think is awesome because we're not just going against the same people every practice. I think that definitely helps us going into every single tournament, um, especially when you're playing against some, you know, absolute studs who know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I think it really helps us, and it's something that I personally, it makes me go into practice. It makes me want to go even more than I did before. Right on. Trent, what's something that we should know about JMU that we might not? Yeah, um, I would say going to Nationals, we have seven seniors starting. Wow. So we're definitely going to have a really different team next year. But I think a lot of us know that, like, this is our last ride and, like, everyone's definitely going to give it all that they have. Bit of a last dance situation. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll talk for a quick second about my team. We're in a little bit of the same boat. We got uh, five of our six normal OT6 graduating this year. Um, so it's going to be a, lo- a last ride for them, too. So I know that they can definitely empathize with you there. Um, Nick, what's something to know about MSU? I mentioned it earlier, and I don't think it's like that much of a surprise with the kind of main seniors leaving last year, but I think just the youth that this team has with, like I said, me being one of only two seniors um, has been cool to see the growth of all the rookies and second year players. Um, I mean, I'm a second year player myself, but all the freshmen and sophomores, it's kind of been cool to see their development and knowing that for the next two, three years, like that's going to be the team you have to face if you're the league. And I don't know, I'd be pretty scared. I knew that that was just going to keep going the rest of the way. So fair enough. I'm biased, but <laughs> oh, my boys ain't scared. <laughs> yeah, because you're leaving. <laughs> you know, you don't have to face us in the semis after this year. Uh, they're, they're ready to fill my shoes. Don't worry. Damn, you'll still be the same. All right. Um, so now I have a little bit more of a personal question for each of you. Um, we will start with, uh, well, I guess all of you have sort of somewhat answered these questions already, but I'll ask it again. Trent, what was it like to win the first ever East Coast Dodgeball Cup just 10 days ago? And then uh, that was JMU's first dodgeball trophy ever. So what did it feel like to kind of bring that back to the program? It's been a storied program. It's been almost a decade or more than a decade. And they've been a great team for a long time, but they haven't really gotten over that hump. And I know it's not a natty, but you you helped get him over that hump. So how what was that feeling like? Yeah, that was that was what I was gonna say. Is like you know a lot of people, especially like in the in the Discord and stuff lately, everyone always talks about JMU doesn't have any accolades and we don't we don't have any trophies or anything under our belt. So it's definitely nice to you know be part of getting you know at least something under JMU's name. So we have we got something to brag about. Obviously, we don't plan on stopping. We want to grab that second hardware while we while we're still here. But it was nice to put a start to JMU getting some trophies. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, Nick, I know you've touched on it a couple times, but um, yeah, looking back, I know playing behind four All Americans in your first year, I'm sure, was quite the experience. And then going from that to having to lead the team um, with Alec going down this year. It's been kind of you and Matt, so I uh, just want, yeah, what's it been like to go from not being a leader to being a leader that quickly, or were you kind of being integrated last year? How has that been? I feel like the seniors last year did a good job at integrating us. Obviously, they helped build the foundation, and I feel like even toward the end of last year, um, like obviously, they're the big guys. They were the ones you went to. Um, but I feel like I was able to step more and even kind of playing behind them per se, was able to 
have a little bit of a leadership role and develop more knowledge that going into this year, I mean, I kind of knew what I was doing, wasn't the blind leading the blind. So was able to kind of take the young guys, teach them what I went through last year, um, kind of the learning points that helped me and just kind of instill that in them because I could felt like I was able to relate to them maybe a little bit more just because it was my first year last year. So could kind of like knew what they were going through and what could help them improve. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, was, I think I heard Barry was at MDC, right? Barry, and- Josh and Gerling were all there. The only oh. one that wasn't was um, DQ because he's out in Boston. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure that was awesome to see them and have their support during MDC. That means a lot. Yeah, they they'll come back. Them and like Jacob Georges, obviously, a couple of year vet, but a lot of the FJ guys will come back and practice. Like Colson said for OSU, they'll come back to our practices. So it's always good to see them since a lot of them are living close to the area. Cool, uh, Colson. Uh, anybody that's watched you this year can tell that you're picking the game up pretty quickly. Um, not only are you talented, but you kind of have a sense for dodge, how dodgeball is played pretty soon on. My question is, what has been the key to picking up the game this quickly? Uh, is there anyone in particular who's kind of accelerated your growth? Um, I would say definitely the key has just been, like, getting constant reps. Two practices a week has definitely helped, you know, going full throttle every practice. You know, it kind of just builds that without even thinking about it. You kind of get that awareness. And then it definitely, especially first semester, you know, being with – Ethan Lemkul consistently. He would always, you know, teach me more of the strategy of the game, being on that left side with him. He'd me walk he'd walk me through it, what's smart, what's stupid, what you gotta look out for, all that stuff. And then I feel like as far as like, you know, throwing and those type of skills, it's definitely been, you know, watching Nick Kemmer for sure. I remember like in the first tournament I would be throwing, like I threw kind of more sidearm in a way and I remember you know looking over at him and he was like launching it from over his head and I was like dang I would really love to do that so I went in there and watched some of his film and then kind of tried to mimic his throw as much as I could and I think that's definitely you know helped me to figure out that part of the game a lot more and help me be as successful as I have been nice um okay so moving on we're gonna get into some kind of prediction stuff uh for nationals this weekend we'll start off with um a quick run through of some of the uh top games on day one um just kind of i'm just kind of gonna kind of go through them and then um kind of say who the favorite is and then if anybody has an inclination to speak up and say that they think there's going to be an upset or they have some kind of wild prediction, please do so. Um, first cue, we got Maryland and Kent State. That'll be a rematch from war. They went to overtime. That should be a pretty good game. Uh, Q2, we got two of you guys matching up, OSU and JMU. That'll be uh, like a... By the way. <laughs> you guys, did you guys play at Kent, if I'm not mistaken? Uh We've played twice, right? Yeah, we've played twice. I'm not really sure of the locations. I think, yeah, one of them was at Kent. We went to uh, overtime. Okay. Uh, So, yeah, that should be arguably the best matchup of day one. And then um, looking forward, yeah, we got uh, Akron and MSU, which I'm sure Akron will be thinking that they can pull an upset there. They're on a bit of a hot streak. Fido is shaking his head. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> I don't know Thank about you, that Trent. Either. Um, <laughs> we got Penn State and Grand Valley. They've played a couple times over the last couple of years. Penn State always. Penn State. Their money. I like that trend. I don't mind that. I think this is the worst Grand Valley's been in probably three or four years. And Hunter Stewart is top five in the league. I, and gotta carry him. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that would disagree with you about either of those things. So yeah, I, I like that shout. And then uh, in Q5, we got MSU versus my team, Bobcats, OU. Um, should be a good one. My, my boys are going to give it their all. Um, 
that's our last game of the day. So we'll definitely be ready for that one. We haven't played you guys since um, shit. I don't think we've played you since our home tournament, like almost yeah. two years ago. It was wow. the first tournament of last year. Yeah. Uh, well, you whooped on us then, so it, it'll hopefully be a lot different this time. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get a score prediction, Terrence. Okay. Yeah, let's hear it, Terrence. I got <laughs> I got OU four, MSU three. I think we're making a statement. Um, I, and I, yeah, I, I don't even, we definitely, we don't even need me. We're going to come crazy this weekend. Nobody's ready for it. Yeah. We'll come back to it. Moving. Yeah. You heard me four to three. That, that was official. <laughs> um, and then last cue of the day, we got another good matchup with grand Valley. They take on Cincy. That should be a pretty good one. Ben smart. versus <laughs> Rosinski. It's a good lefty on lefty matchup. Um, all right, let's move on. Colson, let me get a dark horse team to make a run on Sunday. All right, I'm gonna take uh Miami. They they've definitely showed what they can do at times, and I think that's a team that can sometimes get slept on that can definitely take advantage of that and use full momentum to beat a team that thinks they might have had the game already. So I'm taking Miami. I like that shout. They have two of the top players in the whole country with Cole and Max, two really underrated guys. Um, Trent, dark horse team. <laughs> I know this isn't really your forte, but I feel like there's such a skill gap. Like, <laughs> no, I'm not even trying to be like, I mean, I mean, it's the truth. I feel like after like the top six or seven teams, like there's such a drop off. Well, I, I mean, I'm not even trying to be, I feel like that's the truth. I feel like, honestly, East Coast bias, I feel like if UVA can go into Sunday as like a like a 10 or like not have to play a one through four or five seed, like they'll give them a run for their money. UVA is a team that gets slept on, but they'll play like they played really well against your team, parents. Like, yeah, they didn't look at overtime. No, they they have been a solid team for, I'd say, like a year now. They were even pretty solid when we played them at Nationals last year. They're like, yeah, they don't have any crazy arms or anything, but one through uh, one through twelve, they're pretty solid. They can all catch. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. If they get a favorable matchup on Sunday and they get hot, they could definitely win a round one game. Uh, Nick, you got a dark horse. Colson took one of mine. I was gonna shout out Miami with Cole and Max, and then they might not be a, as big of a dark horse, um, but I feel like they're not really talked about as much in the top, like maybe five or six, but I'd say Penn State because like we haven't played them, but seeing them play other teams and hearing Trent talk about them with um, Stewart, sounds like they play the best when they play the best team. So obviously come Sunday, that's what you want. So could see them making a run, maybe upsetting. Um, maybe they don't think it's an upset, but maybe upsetting a couple schools along the way. I could see that. Yeah, they have not made it out of the round of 16 in the past two years. So I'm sure a lot of those guys that are seniors on the Penn State team are going to be definitely pushing hard this year. So I like that shout for sure. Um, all right, we'll go into my last question. Um, this is going to be uncharted territory, but let me get an All-American shout. It doesn't have to be first team necessarily, but an All-American shout for a team for a player from another team. Someone that might not be super obvious, or if they're if it's a household name, so be it. But uh, shout out someone to make All American this year. We'll start with uh, Colson. Well, I was going to go with the obvious. Hunter Stewart is a dog. He's obviously really <laughs> up there. But uh, your teammate, actually, Terrence O'Donnell, he's also. I mean, I remember playing you guys. He was a he was a weapon, and especially with that. I remember having that close wall ball behind us. It was kind of scary at times with that. But, yeah, he's he's definitely a dude I could see up there. I love that shout. I think, yeah, his name's Sean O'Donnell. I think he's one of the most underrated arms in the whole league. He throws gas. Uh, Fidoa, we have an All-American shout from another team. I'll go with GV and Mason Smith. He might not be one of their top-mentioned players, and – 
I might not put him in first team All American, but I could definitely see like a second or third team. I feel like from last year, his first year, he's definitely grown a lot. And when Ben gets out on the side across from me, he's the one that kind of steps up most of the time. If maybe Budai is moving over, shifting over. So I feel like he's definitely grown um, from his first year and obviously being their captain, more of a leadership role. Yeah, for sure. Trent, all American from another team that's not JMU. Yeah, it's hard. If you had it your way, you guys would do. I know if you had it your way, you'd be one through twelve. But (laughs) absolutely. Um. So yeah, yeah. I was gonna go with Hunter. Obviously, I want to try and. I don't. I guess maybe second or third team. There's a kid on UVA. His name's LJ, and I think he catches just about anything. Like if you don't double throw at him, he's gonna catch it. Like. He doesn't really throw as much. He's definitely not a thrower, but that kid can catch. Cool. Now that's an actual underrated shout because I don't think I've ever heard of that dude before. So. Yeah, no. LJ, yeah. <laughs> I think his last name starts with a W, but he has like curly hair. Like he, he can catch, man. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I got, guys. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I'm sure the rest of the league will appreciate listening to you all. Um, But, yeah, good luck this weekend, and I'll see you in a few days. Thanks for tuning in. You ain't want me and and Trent's hot takes? Hot take? We'll we'll, we'll save that for Discord, maybe. That sounds good. Save it for Discord. Uh, All right. We'll have some smack talk material. Say less. All right. See you guys. Peace. All right. See ya.